This time on Andy's motorcycle obsessions, I want to get rid of the rust, I want to put in a liner and get this tank ready to go back on the bike. G'day everybody and welcome back. So, success last, that uh, road test was a success as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there is still a little bit of smoke coming out of the, um, coming out of the exhaust pipe, but uh, there'll still be residual diesel floating around. So what I want to do is uh, get the bike more rideable. So get the fuel tank on there, uh, get the front brakes working, have the bike and then tune the carburetors and get the bike riding uh, a lot better so that I can actually go and give it a decent crack and uh, see if we can't get it to behave itself. But I'm, I'm filled with confidence after that last run. So next step in the process for me is to get this fuel tank ready to go on the bike and you know, be able to go for a ride with the fuel tank on there. Um, there is a little bit of rust in there. How much? We'll have a bit of a sticky beak. It's not too bad to be honest. There is some. There is some in there. It's enough for me to want to deal with it. So what I'm going to do is treat the inside of the tank using a process called electrolysis. Um, for a couple of years, I worked in a zinc plating company where we used big electrolysis baths to. Uh, take zinc out of solution and deposit it onto um, onto plates. Then we would then recover that zinc and then melt it down and cast ingots. Uh, so I'm going to use a similar sort of a, a similar sort of a process here to um, a cathode and anode effect to re remove the rust from the tank. Uh, this is going to take a number of days. Uh, it'll be a good day on the in the in the bath soaking, and then the treatment post the electrolysis uh, is one where I need to passivate the surface, and then treat it with a liner, and let it cure. So from when the liner goes in, uh, it's about a week before you can actually use it as a fuel tank. So this is not going to be. Um, a one day turnaround spit out video this this will this, what you're watching here is a culmination of a week or two of work to get that fuel tank um, cleaned and then relined so let's crack on with it all right hopefully i've got everything i, I need here to do this process it's not very difficult um, what I've got is uh, a large bin, it's a 75 litre bin, and I'll put a bin liner in it, you don't need to do that, I just did that because uh, I want to reuse it, but it needs to be uh, insulated, whatever you use, don't go and use a steel bin, um, it needs to be plastic or something that won't conduct electricity. It needs to be an insulator. I have got some washing powder. Uh, so this is sodium carbonate, not to be confused with baking powder, that is sodium bicarbonate. You just want the sodium carbonate. What we're going to do is create an electrolytic solution that will conduct electricity um, a lot better than water will and will carry these um, electrons. The uh, I mean, you could use any sort of salt solution, but if you're using table salts and that, they can give off nasty gases, chlorine, etc. So you don't want to be doing that. Uh, so just stick to the old baking soda, and I'm going to add about half a cup for every 20 litres. So this would be uh, 60 litres probably going into it. It's a 75 litre drum, uh, so we'll put about a cup and a half of baking soda in. We have a bog standard battery charger. Just a dirty old car battery charger. Uh, you want volts DC. 
And I've got a bucket here to pre-mix the um, washing soda in. Uh, and then I'll pour it into the, the large bucket. Uh, so we need an anode and we need a cathode. The anode is going to be some Rio bar, uh, which I got from the supermarket, uh, the local hardware store. And I like Rio bar because it's got a lot of iron. Uh, now I don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it. Why not, eh? Because it's looped. So I shouldn't have to, but I'm just going to tie those two ends together with a with a bit of uh, with a jump a jumper cable. So what we're going to do is put the water in, put the tank in, and then we'll hook everything up. Quite clumpy in the bottom. I'm just breaking it up, stirring it up with my hands. Probably mix it a bit quick. I'll put the fuel tank in. I wasn't happy with that Rio bar setup, so I cut it in half and uh, I've got it clamped to the side of the bin so that it's away from the tank. I don't want it touching. We want the, uh, the rust to be carried through the electrolytic solution that we're putting in here. Of course, it should go without saying too that I removed everything from the tank. So the fuel tap, the level, um, the fuel level sender unit, uh, cap, everything's gone. All right. So what we want is the uh, the anode to be positive and the cathode to be negative. All right. Yeah, so uh, it sort of might seem a bit counterintuitive, but you want the negative on the thing you want the rust gone from, and the positive on the thing that you want. Uh, yes, the, the positive is the anode, the negative is the cathode. So, uh, of course, what we're used to seeing in diagrams and what we're used to growing up with learning about DC volts is that it flows from positive to negative. Uh, but what's happening inside the battery, of course, is that all of the electrons are working their way down towards the positive end of the battery being pushed from the negative. Um, and then once they, they shift all the way to the positive side, the battery is then flat and it needs to be recharged and the electrons need to be brought back towards the negative side. So what's happening in the flow here, of course, is that it's coming out of the positive through the uh, electrolytic solution towards the negative because that's the way it does naturally flow. Sorry, from the negative the electrons are pushing towards the positive as it would with inside, inside a battery. Alright, so we'll turn him on, chitch, and we're only pulling a couple of amps there. Leave it on high. And uh, yeah, it'll just mean it'll take more time, the lower the amps, and, you know, more time. When I mentioned I used to work in a zinc plant, we had um, 300 and something volts of DC electricity at 30,000 amps. Um, you can imagine how hot that gets too. We had, you know, it has to be put through cooling towers and what have you not. It's a very complicated process. This is a very simple process and um, it will work. We'll see the rust starting to form on and around the um, 
the iron bar. So we'll just monitor that now and keep an eye on it for the next uh, day or two and see how we go. Obviously, at some stage, I'll have to end for end the, the tank in the in the uh, in the bin and let it do the other side as well because it's only going to draw rust from the part that's immersed. So even though, here we are a couple of days, more than a couple of days later, I ha I've had this in here all week and um, I noticed the amps drop right down so I put a second anode in. And uh, yeah, we've uh, got a lot of rust out of that tank that uh, didn't appear to be too bad on the surface. So, uh, success for that. I wanted to get it out a lot earlier, but um, work and life and everything else gets in the way and it's uh, not easy for me to do that through the week. But here we are. It's looking a lot better in there. It is looking a whole lot better. I don't know how much of that you can see. Last proofs in the pudding. Um, as you can see, it has drawn a lot of uh, corrosion out of the fuel, out of the inside of the fuel tank. So the next step is to go ahead and uh, go through the process for the tank liner that I've chosen. Um, and the first part of that, ironically, is actually a corrosion. Uh, like a de-rusting process and although we may not need to do that uh, I'm going to do it anyway I'll just follow their, their process. <laughs> 